Welcome to At the Table, a play reading series. We're releasing a mini season of short 10 to 20 minute readings produced during self isolation. These pieces are being captured using voice memos on smartphones. This week, we're performing two plays by John Bavoso. This first play is called Prometheus Shrugs. Be sure to also listen to play number two, Indelible, and also our cast and playwright interview episodes to learn more about this piece and the people involved. Now, let's meet our cast. Hi, I'm Nick Lehan. I'm Prometheus, a titan, easygoing, and gregarious. I'm Liz Wasser. I'm playing Eagle, an eagle, over it. Hey, and I'm Vishal Vaidya. I'm playing Heracles, a hero. Entirely too enthusiastic. Our playwright, John Bavoso, begins the script with a quote by von Goethe. And the quote is, A man can stand anything except a succession of ordinary days. Prometheus Shrugs by John Bavoso. Scene one. Lights up on Prometheus chained to a rock. The titan looks remarkably serene. After a few moments, Eagle enters, looking crestfallen. Hey, Prometheus. There you are. Helios is almost halfway across the sky. I know. Sorry. Had a hard time getting out of the nest this morning. No worries. I'm just glad you're okay. Should we get started? I don't know. Not all that hungry yet. So what you're saying is... No, oh, no. You're not feeling... Please don't. Peckish? <sighs> is that the best you've got? I've been waiting ages to use that one. Besides, I've got a really long time to workshop it. Seriously, though, are you all right? You seem down. I don't know. I'm just not really feeling it today. Anything about today in particular? I guess not. It's just... Is this really all there is now? Forever? That's generally what eternity means, yes. The same day over and over again. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. Well, we could try to change things up. Make it a little more fun. I show up, eat your liver, and leave. How much variety can you really achieve? I mean, I guess I could eat your vital organs. No thanks, not interested. <gasps> we could try role play. I could be Andromeda and you could play Perseus. Uh, that story's just not the same without Medusa. Pass. Hey, I'm trying here. Yeah, but why bother? You're always so damn chipper. I'm just trying to make the best of a non-ideal situation. Non-ideal? There is no making the best of this. This situation is demonstrably terrible. I think that's why they call it punishment. Well, I for one am over it. You're the one being punished, but we both suffer. Existentially, I mean, in my case. Funny coming from the being with wings. Prometheus holds up the chains. Just because my chains are a little longer than yours doesn't mean they don't exist. Well, why don't you just not come back then? Oh, right, and risk angering Zeus, who's totally renowned for his forgiving and compassionate demeanor, as our current predicament demonstrates. Touché. Besides, I have chicks to take care of, beaks to feed. Although they're getting sick of faux gras, as I am these days. I'm sorry I'm not providing the kind of gourmand experience you were hoping for. And that's another thing. I, I can't even bring this up to you because no matter how low I'm feeling, you're always in a worse position. And yet somehow you're always so freaking cheery all the time, so I wind up looking like an ungrateful jerk. You're allowed to feel what you feel. This isn't a contest. The Olympics haven't even been invented yet. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, pal, come on. Uh, why don't you just chow down and then you go back to your family? I'm sure you'll feel better tomorrow. What exactly do you do all day when I'm not here? Mostly look forward to you coming back. Oh, for the love of the gods. I mean, sometimes other birds stop by, seagulls and the like. Not great conversationalists. And I daydream. About what? Them, down there, the humans. What they're doing with the gifts I gave them. What amazing new things they're dreaming up. Yikes, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. If I had my choice, would I be chained to a rock all day? Of course not, but I'm glad I got to meet you. You're the one bright spot of this whole thing. You really mean that? Of course. I mean, you don't have a lot of competition in terms of Prometheus's best friend race, but if I got to spend eternity like this, and based on what you already noted about the big guy's demeanor, I do, I'm happy I get to do this with you. Eagle, clearly touched, goes in for a hug, which Prometheus, chained, can't fully reciprocate. 
After a moment, Eagle suddenly pecks at Prometheus's torso. Ow! Sorry, force of habit. Heracles enters. Step away from the Titan. Excuse me, we're kind of having a moment here. I know what kind of moment you're having, and I'm here to put a stop to it. Do you know this person? Don't look at me. Humanoids are your thing. I am Heracles, son of the mighty Zeus. Uh, yeah, read the room, buddy. Not really the time or place to be bragging about your famous father. Yeah, what exactly does the god of toxic masculinity want from me now? My gallbladder? You misunderstand. I'm not here to visit more punishment upon you. I'm here to set you free. Prometheus and Eagle share a dubious look. And why would you do that? It's kind of part of this 12-step program I'm working my way through. And what does dear old dad think about this? That's none of my concern. Heracles raises a bow and points it at Eagle. Say hello to Uncle Hades for me. Whoa, easy there, tiger. Heracles runs a hand along his cloak. Nemean lion, actually. This eagle is my friend, and I won't let you harm it. You're not really in a great position to stop this from happening, but I do deeply appreciate the sentiment. But this beast puts you through unimaginable pain on a daily basis. It's called having a friend. I can put an end to your torment. Couldn't you just do that by breaking these chains? You look like you left. Huh. I guess that could work. Honestly, nonviolence hadn't even occurred to me. And these are the kind of enlightened creatures you traded your freedom for? Heracles raises the bow again. Okay, okay, sorry. But yeah, I like Prometheus's plan. If it means that much to you, if anyone asks, I'll tell them you killed me in the butchest way possible. Okay, it's agreed then. Heracles walks towards Prometheus's chains. Wait, stop. What's wrong? If this, what are you exactly? Demigod, technically but I prefer hero. Ah, and he's humble too. If this hero does this, what happens to us? What happens? You drop your chains and I become a vegetarian. So I guess we both lose a little iron in the process. Uh... Oh, come on, you gotta admit that was a little bit clever. What I mean is, will we ever see each other again? I, I know you're sick of the routine, but you've gotta admit there's some comfort in the predictability in slogging through this together. You can't be serious. Besides, this could get us all in a lot of trouble. Based on your reputation, I didn't expect you to be so concerned with following the rules. All I'm saying is that I've been chained to this rock for a long time. So long that it's a struggle to remember what my life was before this. Surely all the humans I knew before this are long gone. That's what you're worried about? You're not? You're not going to miss me at all? It'll take some getting used to, but I mean, we could still be friends outside of this. But it won't be the same. You you'll get busy with your family and I'll have to be on the run from Zeus. We may never see each other again. That does admittedly suck, but what's the alternative? Do you really want to keep doing this indefinitely? There are worse fates. Are there? Stay, Stay out, out of this. this. Fine, but this is actually just a side quest for me, and I've got, like, several other pretty major things on my to-do list, so can we move this along? You'd really be willing to keep suffering just for... company? Well, when you put it like that, it makes me sound a little codependent. Your whole thing is invention, progress, creativity. How much of that can you really do when you're changed to a rock? The bird has a point. You're right. You both are. I guess I'm just... Scared? A little... But it's not fair to keep you trapped here just because I don't know what to do next. Go ahead, I'm ready. Yes! Heracles rubs his hands together and grabs the chains. Be careful, don't hurt him. Yeah, that's the eagle's job. Was the eagle's job. Heracles breaks the chains and Prometheus stretches his arms and rubs his wrists. You did it! And my work here is done, I'm out. Where are you going? I'm off to see a man about a horse. More accurately, a lot of horses. And cows, sheep, goats. Gotta muck out all of King Augeus' stables in a single day. Sounds shitty. But thank you for setting us free. It's what I do. Remember, the official story is that I totally murdered you with my bare hands. Heracles exits. What a weirdo. 
So I guess this is it. Keep in touch, okay? Of course. You're gonna do great things. I'm sure of it. They hug again and Eagle exits. Great things, yeah. Prometheus starts to exit, but stops. He considers and makes his way back to the rock, sitting down where he once stood, the broken chains surrounding him. I think I'll start tomorrow. End of play. At the Table, a play reading series is produced by Charging Moose Media. Our artistic director and senior producer is Rachel Flynn. Editor is Ned Donovan. Associate producer is Megan Bagala. Music this week is by Marcus Thorne Bagala. Special thanks to our playwright John Bavoso and our cast Liz Wasser, Nick Lehan, and Vishal Vaidya. Be sure to tune in to our cast interview and playwright interview episodes where you can learn more about the team behind this piece and more. See you next time.